Here's a little peek before the floss tube. It's going to be a two chair day with all that I have to show you. So that's what it looks like right now. Hi everyone, it's Karen Combs and welcome to Floss Tube 30. It is April 15th and it has been three weeks since I did my last floss tube. I've got lots to show you. As you just saw in the little video, it's a two chair day. <laughs> I've got all kinds of stuff to show you. Uh, I wanna thank you for joining me. If you're new, this is my channel on YouTube where I talk about quilting. I have quilting videos, but I also have my floss tube videos, which is about stitching. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. And if you would, and I want to thank you for all that you have done for your comments, but if you would hit that like button, that thumbs up, and when you do that, that helps other people find the video. So that would be much appreciated. And thank you for all your comments in the past. I love reading them. Can't wait to see your comments from today. But as you saw in the opening, it was a little longer because we went to Little Rock last week to see the eclipse, and I put a picture of my husband and I in our basically welder's helmet, or hel welder's glass, eclipse glasses, and we had about three minutes and 15 seconds of totality where we were at. I actually hit the stopwatch on my phone so we could see how long totality lasted. And the photo I put in there is not one that I took. It is one that I uh, saw on, I think it was the April 15th Eclipse Facebook page that they said, welcome to share. And that's actually what we saw. Uh, it was amazing. And while we were in Little Rock, uh, my husband played golf and I got to go to Shepherd's Needle, which was an amazing shop. And I put some pictures of the shop in there. You can always go back and look at the introduction and take a look at those, even stop the video so you can see. I put some of the pictures of all the samples. It was amazing. And I'll be talking about one of them in a little bit. Also, all the floss, all the linen, all the charts. If you are going anywhere near Little Rock or even make a detour, it's it's worth it. It is an amazing shop. So I had a wonderful time there and I've been working in my garden. I put a picture uh, of the garden. I think I took that this morning or no, I took it yesterday. And so it's coming along well. I've had to cover a couple times and I know those of you that are in the uh, zones that are a little further north are wondering, why is she planting so early? Well, raised bed is a little different. Uh, the soil gets warmer, quicker, and some of those vegetables that I'm planting are cool weather, so they love it. Um, I think one of the bed in the back that's got carrots and sugar snap peas and lettuce, I actually planted the carrot seeds and sugar snap peas seeds back at the end of February. And they love the cold. They don't like the heat, so I have to start them early. And I, like I said, I've had to cover a couple times as we've gotten chilly, but with the raised beds, you can do that because, you know, it's kind of compact. So I've been working in that, put a picture of our little dog Benji in there. He's fine right now, but we had quite a week and a half with him at the vet twice. We don't know what happened. He's 13 and a half. Could be just something starting of his age. He could have gotten in something, ate something, but he was a pretty sick little guy for a while, but he's doing better. Um, so I took a picture of him because took him up to the garden and he was enjoying being out in the sunshine. And I think that's all the pictures that I put in there. So let's start up, I think of something as we're going along. I had um, from last video, some questions I wanted to, clarify a couple things. I had talked about putting your floss on bobbins and how you know, I do that too, but sometimes when you do that, you get the little kink in the floss. And I mentioned beeswax would help with that. Had some other wonderful suggestions that I wanted to share with that with you. Uh, Rita and Tammy both mentioned Jean Farish, and I had forgotten about this. So 
I have watched uh, many of Jean's videos. They're wonderful. And Jean uses a sponge. She gets a damp sponge and she puts it in a little uh, case. I just put in this little tiny Tupperware glass that I've had forever. But that way, what you can do with the damp sponge is just run your floss across it. So it's just barely damp and that will get the uh, kinks out, help it from knotting. Also, checking who told me this, a steam from a kettle. If you have a kettle and it's steaming, you can run it across that. And mentioned a flat iron. That was interesting and really um, thought, I don't have a flat iron, but for those of you that do, that might be an option. And then Maggie mentioned a wet paper towel, which is similar to the sponge. So I wanted to share those because those were all really interesting suggestions and some I'd never thought about before. So it's always good to have different knowledge and different tips that people use. So I wanted to share that. The other thing uh, has questions from last time. Had, Somebody asked about quilt classes. Am I still teaching those? I'm not traveling to teach. I do have a few things set up with guilds. Um, and I do have my Craftsy class. So if you are on Craftsy, and often they run specials. So if you've never been on Craftsy, it's thousands probably of videos all about different kinds of crafts. And you can sign up for a membership and watch any videos that you want. And often they run a special for the membership and that you can, it's like anything, it's streaming, turn on and turn off. So that's, um, I'll put the link for that. I asked you if you'd like a sewing room tour and overwhelmingly yes so I'll be working on that probably in June and then the other thing I mentioned last time was about the black work and I wanted to share that Lynn Fairchild has a YouTube channel and I'll put the link to that in the description so all you have to do is click on it I started watching some of her videos and she has a two and a half hour class on black work. It starts with the history. It I watched about an hour of it yesterday. It was excellent. So I know some of you said you would like to learn more about black work. I will put the link to that. And then in the Royal School of Needlework, I attended a virtual lecture, which they have them. You can attend them live, sign up for them, or you can watch them after the fact. And I did watch one uh, several months ago live, but it is still there available. It's a nominal fee to watch them. They're excellent. I'll put the link to that. And the one that I watched was about Hans Holbein and his work, his life. It was more about his life than his work. Some of both. It was very, very good. And I have enjoyed his paintings, especially of the Tudor court, Henry VIII, uh, his wives, and seeing the detail in the clothing. And that's where you can really see the detail of the black work. So I'll put all those links in the description. And the last thing is I was corrected on how I said Han's name, and it is Holbein. And I said Holblin. And I know the difference, but as I said to someone, that will teach me to <laughs> do a floss tube when I'm distracted. I had people working in the house, and and I also, it's I will show you something I got from the Cruel Goblin, and so I kind of meshed Goblin and Holblin, and it's Holbein, so I wanted to correct that. So I think... That's it. One more question before we go into, oh, lots of stuff I've been doing and things I got at the uh, Shepherd's Needle. Sherry asked about how long do I cut my threads? And when I am doing the, oh, it's buried. Oh, I'll show that later. But I do like this winder. This is nine inches. And when I'm cutting the links for my DMC. I like this because it will make the 
lengths, all uniform at 18 inches. Now, what if you're pulling off of a bobbin and you don't have this or you don't have a ruler handy? I have a little trick that we used when I was, uh, I used to share this when I was teaching quilting classes, especially if we were pulling thread for English paper piecing or uh, hand quilting from the length from your finger to your elbow. So unwind, get it unwound here. That's too long, that's too long. Now, your length will vary. So I usually go just a little bit further here because that length is just about 14 or 15 inches for me. So that's what I do. I use my hand and usually I just do about that length somewhere in here and let's see how long that is. So just basically from your fingertip to just past your elbow, you might have to your elbow. And the link I just cut, 18 inches. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Uh, so anyway, that's what I do. Just hold it, hold it like that. Come up just above, for me, it's just above my elbow. You might be to your elbow, but that is a handy way to get a consistent length. I know if you're using a fine silk, sometimes uh, it's helpful to do a length that's not quite as long as that. So you might just go to your elbow, but just that's the length that I use and you always should have your hand with you. <laughs> so that's what I do, but when I'm cutting the links uh, for the DMC, I do like these winders. All right, so what have I been working on? So what we're going to look at is some of the things I've been working on and also some of the haul that I got. And before I do that, I want to mention I just attended Saturday, one of my favorite things to do. It is Stitch Across the Pond. And it is a gathering of stitchers from, well, from all over, really. Uh, it started out with UK and USA stitchers, but I think we had, we had someone from Australia yesterday and Ukraine, and it's all over. And it's limited, so, and it's once a month, so I will put a link to the Facebook page. And then when the sign up happens, or you have to register to attend. And it's free to attend, but you do need to register. And if you don't think you can attend, don't register because they only have so many spots. And so if you register knowing that, eh, I don't know if I'm gonna go, you've taken a spot from someone else. So make sure that you can attend and it's two hours and for my time, which is central, it goes two to four central time. You can adjust uh, according to where you live, but oh, it's fun. It's one of my favorite things. So that is stitch, stitch across the pond. And I think it's limited to 50, it might be a little more than that, but it's limited, it's just great. Um, it's run so well, people raise their hand. It's a Zoom call, um, raise their hand. And if they wanna share something, and some people share things, uh, what they're working on, and others just sit and stitch and, and watch. So it can be either way. But that was Saturday. I just had a great time. And I'll talk about um, another Facebook group in just a moment. But what have I been working on? Let me show you my book here, my book of days. And do you see the little eclipse? <laughs> I found the eclipse. It looks like an eclipse uh, sticker. And then I put the golf sticker next to it because my husband got to play golf. I put that when we were in Arkansas. I might keep this handy because I'm probably gonna need to check it for what I'm working on. Actually, I think I've got one thing I started that I didn't write in here. Let me get to my starts. There we go. So I've been working on, I feel like I'm getting to this really early, but maybe not. 
So this is in my Saju fabric bag, project bag by Patchwork Paw Print. Uh, this is Val that does these. She has an Etsy shop. I will put a link to that. I love her bags. Look at the double, the double zippers. So what is in this bag is my Antal Ufendal. And I am using the Vicki Clayton Silk Pack on this. I know you've seen this before, but here they are. That's the one I'm working on right now. Usually keep it there. This is always the problem. Where am I gonna put stuff? And that is done on 40 count sleeping bare linen. And this is done one thread over two. And oh, there goes my notes. I'm gonna have to get it. Hold on. Excuse me. I'm oh, sorry about that. So here is Anne, and I am working on the border, so you'll just have to excuse the thread there. But here it is. So I've got the top portion just about done. I still have to work on this flower right here. Uh, that basket's a monster. It took a while. So, and then I'm working on the border. I need to get those flowers in before I continue and then finish the basket. And I've got some over one that's here and up here that I need to finish, but I do have the border all the way around. So here it is, let me kind of zoom up here. Just love this. Even though that basket's a monster. Oh, it's gorgeous. Look at the bottom of it. Look at the detail. So that's Anne Tall and working on her. I have several things. I think I worked on her out of the two weeks, maybe five or six days. Let me put this here. Hopefully I don't have to pick her back up. And I don't have these in any particular order. I just kind of piled them up. Then I also, this is a, pretty sure this is a new start from the last time. I don't know if I, hold on, let me look. I don't want to tell you it's a new start. Start. It is a new start. So you've not seen this. This is on needle and flax, 40 count furly. And I'm using the called for hand dyed floss. And this is, enjoy the chart first, Emmeline Hotchkiss by Cross Stitch Antiques. And I pre-ordered this for market. I loved the color. Um, lots of warm colors in this, oranges. Um, I'll show you the floss in just a minute. And my aunt, my great aunt was Emmeline. That's what we called her. We called her Aunt Emmy, uh, but it was Emmeline. And so when I saw that, I thought, okay, gotta get it. This is a Canadian sampler. The called for linen is 36 count Eureka, and I did not have that. And I gotta be honest, it took me a while to find a linen that I liked because the colors, here they are, they're beautiful. Uh, but there are some light colors, see these light ones? So if I had a very light color, this color, Adobe, kind of disappeared. And then if I chose too yellow of a linen, this summer night disappeared. It took me a, a lot longer than I, I kept pulling things out, laying the threads on them. And when I lay the threads, the first thing I do is just lay all the colors, but then I will separate out a strand and lay it on the linen and then step back a step to see, does it disappear? Because when you have all of this, 
sometimes it looks like it might show up more than it does. So that just helps me see. But the colors, we've got Bittersweet, which is a fun color. Uh, Grecian Gold, which is gorgeous. Look at this ribbon, red. Sarsaparilla, these are the called for. Storm Clouds, these are, I think, all gentle art. Summer Meadow. That also one, did I say that? That's kind of a yellow one. Oh, Weeping Willow and Adobe. So those are the colors. Let me kind of wind it around. And I liked how Furley looked. I actually started a couple different ones, just a few stitches to see. And this is the one I settled on. And I started in the bottom right corner on this. And I had someone ask, they always start in the middle. Why am I starting on the corner? Or do I ever start in the middle? I used to, years ago, when I was cross-stitching, years and years ago. And when I returned back to it a few years ago, I saw that people were starting in the corner and I thought, ooh, I can do that. You have to make sure that you have enough linen, but now we have websites like Cross Stitch Calculator by Yarn Tree that we can go in and calculate the size, calculate our um, size of the linen, the thread count and the border and make sure we have enough. So that's what I always do, but here it is. And I started, you'll laugh, I know it's like, show it. Start it in the bottom right corner because I want to get to that house. <laughs> and if I started at the top, I'd have to do all of that. So I wanted to get to the good stuff. So here it is. There we go. Hold on. Let me fold it so you can see it. I just have a small start. But there it is. And I just took it out of the hoop. So there it is, and I love the colors. The house is, let me check here. I had to move a message. I, what in the world? I got all these messages popping in, and I turned my phone on airplane mode. I should not be getting these messages. Uh, the house is done in, see but weeping willow is it a greenhouse yes it is all right it's a greenhouse so this is the color of the house i almost thought about using this for the house which is a gray green but i think i'm going to do this the color i'll i'll see about that but worked on that and it is really the colors are really gorgeous. It's a beautiful sampler. And I have that in a project bag I made from some of my stash. So it's done in batiks. And I can't show you inside, there's the inside. And they've got the chart in there. And for those of you, I know some of you watching are Ada Stitchers. This, I believe, is Ada Friendly. I don't think there's any over one or specialty stitches. I'm just glancing. I don't believe there is. So that is by Cross Stitch Antiques. So got a little start on that. And there is a stitch along with Audrey of Stitch, Stitch Bead and... Kim, the con uh, contented needleworker Kim, and I believe the hashtag is Stitch Emmeline. St uh, I will look that up and I'll make a note. Hashtag for the cell. I have it also on my vlog, on my Instagram. I put a picture of it, but I will put the hashtag for those of you that want to join in. And it's just open-ended um, stitch along. It's not assignments. It's just join in and show your work. Here is 
another one that I've been working on. Sorry. And it is, I showed this last time, Mary Ann Cobb. Where's the book? I have this in an older Stitch Folk bag, which that's what kind of clanged. Oh, gorgeous fabric. This one's an older one. Okay, it's kind of all piled in here. Sorry, I crinkle. All right, here we go. This is by Brenda Juve with Thy Needle and Thread. This is such a delicate and powerful sampler. I, by that I mean, look at, look at the border. It's so delicate, but then you have that strong, beautiful house. Love this. I'm just gonna real quick uh, love this chart because it's all done in color. Just a quick flash. Love that. I am using for that called for hand dyed and DMC, and I'm using 36 count amaryllis, the backside, which I will show you that. Here's the threads it's buried in here. To the front of it. All right, so here's all the threads. Let me just get them on quick. Very gorgeous. Look at that blue. Ooh, can't wait to get to that. That's in the house, I think. Well, here that is. And the linen is by Under the Sea. Love the linen. And I decided to use the back of it. The front is pretty yellow. Let me see. And I don't think it's going to show up. I don't think it's going to show up. But there's just a little less yellow showing on the back of the linen. So I'm using that. So here it is. I think last time when I showed it, I didn't have the bird done. So I got the bird. And look at how beautiful that border is. Let me get close. Look at the coloration on those flowers. So I'm using one thread over two on that one. And I believe this is also Ada Friendly. I don't think there's any, just looking, there's a French knot. There's some back stitch, some straight stitch. And the straight stitch is, uh, let's see, it's on the steps, the door knocker, the crosses in two flowers, just a little bit top of the fence. Just, uh, so just a little bit, but I believe you could do that on Ada. And the called for is 36 count American chestnut. And it's... Um, Pretty good size. Now you could, if you are an Ada stitcher, you could do 18 count and it would be the same size, which it works out to be 14 by 16. So it's pretty good size. I did have a question. I just want to show, I've just done that corner. Here's my piece of linen. So pretty, just got the top corner. I was looking at it today thinking, Certainly, I make sure I have enough linen, but I do. I'm I'm here, so I'll be fine. And I always measure, I don't know how many times, to make sure. I had a question. Um, it was from an earlier floss tube where I did a linen comparison. I think it was floss tube 15. And someone asked if Winter Moon would work for Marianne Cop. Here's Winter Moon. I actually have some. I think so. Look at the, there's my linen and there's linen. There's Winter Moon. Very similar. So I think that would be a good choice. And here's the threads on it. Let me just open it up here. Yeah, I think that would be a good choice. That white, yeah, the white shows up. So 
always do a floss toss, but I think that that would work. So I wanted to pull that and show that because I did have that question. So I've been working on Mary Ann Cup, and I'll be working on this later today because in another Facebook group I'm in, which is our sampler years, every Monday night we have Stitching with Mary. And it is, uh, you join on Facebook Live through the group, and we sit and watch while Krista stitches on a Mary sampler and if you have questions you can put it in the chat but it's just so enjoyable so I always look forward to that it's an hour I think it's an hour so I'll be working on this Mary sampler during Mondays with Mary drop that hopefully I don't have to grab it and then also I was working on this yesterday Worked on this in the last three weeks. This is Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. Uh, let me go this way. There it is. And I have about half of the frames done. And I have the first block done. This one is done on 40 count lakeside sand dune with the called for dmc and here there's lots of colors and when i was talking earlier about winding uh or cutting the dmc to all the size this is the size that it is so here it is i'm working on of course i want to get to the, this house so i'm working on that one now here it is, and you can see I've got quite a few of the frames done. And I stopped working on this because I really wanted to work on the house. I'll come back to it. But I do have the first one done. And let me go closer. Just got the top of the house. Let me go back to the picture so you can see. And someone mentioned that they did this and personalized, let's see, where is it? it? Personalized this one with a family member's name. So I'm thinking of doing that for my father who loved to sail. And we do have some ancestors that were in the New England area back in the 16 and 1700s. I might look up on our job genealogy and put one of them there. So I haven't decided about that yet, but I am going to personalize that. So worked on that and the frames, I mentioned this before, I'm doing half crosses with a full cross every 10. And then once I have it all the way around, then I can go back and uh, finish. And you can see I started the next one down there and Decided just to go ahead and work on the house. I worked on shores, and there is a stitch along for shores as well. And I did not write down who it's with, um, but I will be posting on my Instagram and include that. Could just be shores. I, I don't remember. I'll have to look that up and put that. Let me write a note to look that up and put that hashtag in there. And that I think is also just a fun, post your pictures on Instagram. I don't think there's any deadline on that one. I think I had just started on this one and you saw just the beginning of it. And this is needlework panel of fruit trees with two animals lovingly called fruit tree. This is by Scarlet Letter. Oh, forgot to mention on Shores, that also is Ada Friendly because it's just cross-stitch. This one does have over one quite a bit. Uh, so this is for linen. This whole bottom and a bunch of the flowers are over one. And on this one, I am doing 36 count winter moon. Oh, another winter moon and the called for DMC. And it's got a lot of colors. And I've shown these floss tags before and how I just put a little picture 
here so I know what that is for and just put that on the back. Just took a picture, um, used it on my copier, just reduced the size. So there it is. Look at all the colors. And I have this in my Wishing Thorn William Morris bag. But I've started on this one at the bottom, bottom right corner again, so I could tackle some of this over one. That really is pretty. Okay. And there it is. And got the toes of the animal and got some of the background. I just love the colors. They are so vibrant on here. And I actually am not even minding the over one. I think it's just the toes and the legs of the animal so far that are the over one. The rest of it is over two. Here's the original 17th century panel. So that is by the Scarlet Letter and I'll keep working on that. And let's see one more that I worked on. Yes. Worked on the frames of this. This is, let me go to my whips. So I'm doing, working on a combination of some of the things that have been a new start, some of the things that are newer, uh, and some of my older, kind of a combination. This is on 40 count platinum with the called for DMC. And it is the houses of Hawk Run Hollow. Now I've got the top almost done and starting to work on the frames or the outline for the others. Here's all the called for, lots of them. A lot. <laughs> Here it is. So worked. I don't. I think I did a little bit more on the house, and then while we were gone on our trip, I can't cross stitch in the car, so I had to wait until uh, we got where we were going. And I did work some on the frame down below for house. I guess. I guess that's house eight. But got a little bit more to do up there. Block three is done. Block two. I have to add the year and my, I think my name. Let's see. Yeah. My name and the year to house one yet. So I haven't added the year because I don't know when I'm going to get this done. But I'm so pleased with how it's coming along. And that also is Ada Friendly. Okay, now I can move to the second chair. Let me, oh, on the floor. Hold, please. I don't know if I can get that. I'm going to try. Excuse me while I get that. Okay, got it. Try to move all this without everything dumping. Sorry for that. So I was watching um, Brenda and Laura, and Laura showed that she started this, which I love this, and I finished it, so I wanted to show that. This is Threadworks Primitive Christmas Tide. Hopefully I didn't just show the chart. There it is. And I finished this last year. And I don't think in this book I don't have what I used. I think there's, this is also Ada Friendly. It called for 35 count cocoa by weeks, but I know I did it on milk and honey. I just don't remember what um, size. I might have done 40 and used the called for colors, but here it is and I did frame it. When I was at Shepherd's Needle, they had this all done on a spool, and it was gorgeous. So I did want to show that and mention the spool. I don't know if I took a picture of it or not. All right, write this down. But that is 
Threadworks Primitive, and I believe that's a PDF. So you can uh, look for that. Let me write that down because I'll put a link. Try to do this so I can give you the links so you can find those things. So I was also watching the latest video from the attic and Carolyn and Sherry and Mrs. Flossie and Diane, the woodpecker's daughter, and I know there's some others, some of the gals that work at the shop and uh, some others did the floss tube. Jean was resting after chemotherapy treatment, so they went ahead and filmed, enjoyed it, always loved seeing Jean, but no, she needs to rest, so wishing her the best. Get well soon, Jean. But they mentioned that the sampler of the month this month is Dorcas Hayes. And in their newsletter, they also put some of the photos they had. Um, oh, and I didn't write down who it was, but one of their lovely customers from the UK came and visited and brought her Dorcas Hayes. And I think it's at the attic right now, so you can see it. But here is mine, and I am using, do I have it down here? Trying to find it. These are, these are my whips. <laughs> there is Dorcas, there she is. I'm using 35 count Weeks linen in the linen color. And I'm using a combination of the Vicky Clayton silk pack along with the NPI called for in the pattern. So here is where I'm at. It's a band sampler. It is beautiful. I've got to do some fill in here and I'm unhappy with my queen stitch. So I'm going to take that out. I've got to do some statin stitch there. Um, working on the letters, which I think every letter is a different color. So working on that. There's my little needle minder at the top, but it is one of the prettiest samplers I think I have ever seen. So there it is. So I think I'm going to pull that out to work on this month because it is a uh, sampler of the month. And so if you're interested in that, the attic has the pattern. They also have silk packs for that. All right, let me to keep moving that. So what did I get? For, for haul. Oh, lots. <laughs> because, I mean, I keep getting these messages. Because several things I had ordered took a while to come in. They all came in, and then I went to Shepherd's Needle and had fun. So, <laughs> let me show you that. So let me show you some of the things that... I ordered from market that have come in. I don't know if I showed this the last time or not. These are the new colors from Classic Color Works. I think I did. Weathervane, London Fog, Misty Mauve. Yes, I'm positive I showed that. And that came with a little chart from Little House Needleworks. It all came in a package all together. So I ordered that, but then I also ordered from Tomorrow's Heirlooms, the new colors of Weeks and Gentle Arts. So these are the new colors. Cardinal, this is Weeks, Cardinal. Grassland. And you may have seen some of this already from other Floss tubers, if so, I apologize. Um, Queen Anne's Lace. River Otter. Now, sometimes when I see things a couple different places, it just reminds me, oh, that's right, I was going to order that. Or what was the new color? It just helps me remember. This is Winter Wheat. And then the new colors from Gentle Art. Oh, look at this Dragon Fruit. It is gorgeous. Goldenrod. 
and wisteria very soft color kind of a soft purpley gray so those are the new colors ordered those and those came in since the last floss tube and oh, where do i go where do i go i ah, just grab it i guess i know i showed this last time the american welcome ordered that and i did get the called for linen from farm girl dry goods and i think this chart was at her retreat and a year ago or more and now it's open uh, anyone can purchase it and i showed the colors the dmc and the color and cotton got that but then i also and i'm de deciding which to do i ordered the vicky clayton silk pack because that has just become available so here is that and you can see the colors so I'm trying to decide which I want to do in the classic color or in the colored cotton or the silk. I haven't decided yet, but I did get that. And I do love that. You saw my live on little that I did before. That's just this just reminds me of it. It's so pretty. So I'm looking forward to getting a start on that. And to go along with that, one of the items I picked up at Shepherd's Needle is new from market. This is Stacy Nash, Calling of the Sea, with the whale, uh, the pillow, and the um, compass, and the ship. The whale is, let me look here, six and a half by five and a half. The ship is three and a half by three and a half, and the compass is three and a half. And they're, those were done on 46 count seraphim linen, antique lace, and Weeks Dye Works. So I just thought that went so well with this and with Calling of the Sea and with um, Live on Little. So anyway, I did pick that up. Oh, I'm sorry, my light's reflecting there. did pick that up. And when I told you I ordered from Tomorrow's Heirloom, I ordered something else from them. And Sharon, who, see, Classic Color Works used to be Crescent Colors. I think I have that right. And I actually have some. And Classic Color Works purchased Crescent Colors and they're continuing the colors. And Sharon was the dyer of that. Well, she now has new linen she's dyeing. And Tomorrow's Heirloom has it, and The Attic has it. There may be some others, but I know those have it for sure. So I wanted to show you that. I got a fat quarter of three of her new colors. The fourth one uh, they ran out of, and they'll be sending to me. This is 40 count coffee cake and I'm going to hold it up against vintage country mocha so you can see it's a little lighter so that is coffee cake and it is that beautiful kind of not a golden brown but it's a light brown you can see it's lighter than vintage country mocha perfect sampler color then this one is Madeline or Madeline. I mean, here's coffee cake. Here's Madeline. It's a little more yellow. And I'm going to hold it up against Vintage Country Mocha so you can see. A little brighter, a little more yellow than Vintage Country Mocha. And then the other color, and both of those are excellent um, sampler colors. This one is, is it Cup of Joe? No, Cup of Mocha. And it is a brown that's got a little bit of red to it. So you can see that there. That's a good color. That's one you don't usually see. So I'm glad I got those. So did purchase those and um, I ordered it and then called them, uh, ordered, sent them an email 
with what I would like with my shipping information. And then I called them with a credit card and while I hit them on the phone, that's when I said, do you have the new colors of um, Weeks and Gentle Arts? And they said, yeah, we do. I said, could you add that to the order? So uh, got it to me right away and they were so wonderful to work with. I'm looking forward to ordering more with them. Okay, let me, I did place, well, remember, okay, where am I going? I don't know, I'm all over the place. Remember I said that I had mix, mixed up Cruel Goblin with Hans Holbein and created his new name. <laughs> but this is what was on my mind because when I taped that floss tube, I had just gotten an email from the Cruel Goblin that the club I had joined, the Schoolgirl Sewing Club, had shipped, and I was so excited. It took uh, just over a week, I think, to get to me. It did not take that long. It came in a padded envelope. Here's the box. And if you haven't seen this yet, close your eyes. It came beautifully packaged. And then each, it's a year club, and several of the clubs I was in last year, I joined for the one year and I was finished and I decided I would join another club. So this was one of the ones I joined. Through the year, when you get each design, it will be filled in. So this is the design. And you got a box or a card that told you what you were getting. And here that is. And in this one, it's Angeli Dilly's 1859 reproduction sampler. It has paper paper bark linen by Fox and Rabbit and over dyed threads. There's also the needle. There's a needle book. There's um, finishing fabric. It came beautifully packaged. And look at this tissue. So here it is. And in here is, here's the uh, floss card with the linen, floss card with the floss. Let's see. Let's see. Here's the linen. I think it even came with a needle. Here's the booklet for the chart. And I'm just gonna glance through here. here. Here's a bigger picture. So uh, I don't know if this will be released to the public. I, if somebody knows if their samplers are released later, put it in the in the chat and I'll mention it because uh, there may be people wanting to get it later and and I don't know if it'll be available. And here's the needle book, and it comes with the fabric to finish it. So all of that in this beautiful box. I've torn it all to pieces now, but here it is. I'm looking forward to working on that. And I don't know where this random bag came from. I don't know. Something I put on the floor, I guess. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> Just materialized. And then this also came this is from the Homespun Needlework Group on Facebook. You've heard about them before. And they offer exclusives. And I have not purchased any of the exclusives till recently. I'll show you one in a minute, but I did purchase this one. This is Stacy Nash, Rose Hill Farm Sampler and Pinky. And you can only get it through the club the link is in the Facebook page and it takes you to the page. This was kitted through Hobby House. And here's the pin keep. Now this one, here's the colors. This one is on, I don't know if it shows. It also came with no, this was not by Hobby House. That one I ordered has not come in yet. This was Acorns and Threads. Do I have that right? Yes, it's Acorns and Threads, I apologize. This one 
it was acorn and threads because they included this little corner gauge and they also sent this little notebook. So I apologize for that. This was kitted through acorns and threads. And here's the linen, which right now I can't remember which linen it is. It's dark. So I'm debating if, if I want to use that or something else. Because here it is. I don't know. Let me look real quick. Now, uh, I'll just show you another time. I don't want to take up time looking at it. But it's got some light areas in it. So I have to decide what to do there. But it is a beautiful design. And again, that I'm not sure, but that may be come available in a year or so. I'm not sure how the exclusives work, but it is through the Homespun Needlework Facebook group, and I'll put the link to that. They offer exclusives at least several times a year, and I it's only been recently I purchased um, this one and then one other. Oh, and then I purchased one with Hobby House, which hasn't come in yet. So, yeah, I... I've gotten sucked in. <laughs> so here's the other exclusive through there. And I just got the project bag from Stitch Folk. It's a big one. And I haven't started it yet. I'm debating if I'm just going to do part of it. You've seen this online, I'm sure. This is Charlotte Warrington. And they were going to offer the, uh, another round of ordering. If you're a member of that group, go right away. I think it's only open a few more days. And it might have already closed. They just opened it so people could order. Charlotte Warrington, 1838. It's massive. And the kit was kitted up by Colorado Cross Stitcher. This is done with Mason just looking, Mason, sewing box, mid-light, 40 count. So pretty. The colors, lots of bright colors on that. It came with this beautiful little card. So I haven't started on that yet, but I've got everything all together now in the project bag, so I won't lose the parts. Uh, the other kit, not kit, club that, remember I told you a couple of the clubs I was in last year finished, so I thought, okay, I'm going to join a couple different ones this year, and another uh, one of them that I joined was the Stitch Folk Project Bag, so this came, it came with this little uh, zipper pull, beautiful, I love Barry's bags, Came everything inside, had some extra things. These are some, um, came with some tea and some candy and some wax melts. There's a little, let me open it. Love this sticker for the book. Can you see that? Yeah. And a project card. Got lots of beautiful little extras. And then take a look at this. Looks like a little cloche matching counting pins. I mean, that's just beautiful to display just like that. And this, I think the zipper pull was in this. Barry just thinks of everything. It's like a birthday present, a Christmas present to yourself, all wrapped up together. So that came, I don't have anything in it yet, but it will be getting a special project when that project tells me what it wants in there. One other order that came in, and then I'll show, no, there's a couple more. Then I'll show you what I got uh, at Shepherd's Needle. I was watching Olivia B, and she showed this, and I immediately went to her Etsy store. Hillside Rookery and ordered. And there it is. She was showing 
Riley Harbor by Kathy Barrick. And I had not seen this before. I don't know there's not a copyright on it. It was new to me. And I loved it. I guess I really am loving things with houses and oceans or Great Lakes. And so I ordered that. And the reason I went to Olivia's Etsy page is because she had a silk pack. And it came in this beautiful little bag. It came quickly. And here's the silk pack that goes with. Now I put it on this ring. She had them all tied with this. And I added this uh, metal ring, which I use these a lot. I'll put a link to what they are on the description. But here's the colors and these are all NPI silks. Look at the colors. And it's called for Autumn Gold by Lakeside. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> I, can't, I don't have any, and I don't know if I can get any. So I looked in my stash, and this, I thought, worked well. I decided to go 46 count. This is by Fiber on a Whim. This is oatmeal. And I have a tiny little start. Um, where did I start? I started in the upper right corner right here. And I just wanted to see how those colors looked. So I started, and yeah, I don't know where the needle went, but I have a hanging thread, so I didn't fix that. Here's the colors. And you see, I just have a teeny little start there. But this color of the linen is gold. It's not showing up like that. Let me see. It's washing it out. It's a beautiful golden color that's better and the color. I need to hold those up so you can see. So I get back here, you can see a little more. There it is. But I decided I wanted to do it in the MPI silk, and there it is, and that's by Hillside Rookery, Olivia B. And she's working on that herself. So I just wanted a tiny start to see if the linen worked, and I liked it. So that will be going into a rotation. And this I don't have plans to start, but I was ordering, can't remember what I was ordering from 123 Stitch, but it came in after the last floss too. And I added this to my order. This is also by the Scarlet Letter, Four Angels Morning Sampler. And I've looked, this was in my wish list for a while and I decided to order it. And then I ordered the MPI Silk. There it is. I just love those faces. Um, I think there's a lot of over one. I'm not sure. I'm gonna, gonna have to look. That's, I'm also gonna have to decide uh, what linen to use. But here are the colors. I just loved those faces. And what does it say? Let me look real quick. Yeah, I don't have my glasses on, so I'll have to look later, but here's the colors. I just thought those were beautiful, and it says morning pictures were a not uncommon artwork in England and America in the late 18th and early 19th century. I know many of the older cemeteries, when I've bigger, been visited New England and gone to some of the cemeteries from the 1700s or even some 1600s, they have the angels on the tombstones, the headstones. So I just really liked that. Ordered that. That'll go in the stash for later. And okay, now we can look at, hopefully you're not tired of this, um, look at haul. What I purchased at Shepherd's Needle. If you're looking for a chart and you can't find it, I guarantee, can't guarantee, but I imagine they have it. Oh, I have two other pieces of linen in that one, two, three stitch order. This finally came back in stock, corn silk. And that's a color I wanted. It's more of golden. Let me put it against the vintage country mocha. So 
So that came in, ordered that. And my uh, linen club, Fiber of the Month, Fox and Rabbit came in. So that's oyster shell, nice gray. So that came in. All right, so when I went to Shepherd's Needle, what I mostly was looking for was linen because I want to see it in person if possible to order. It's not always possible. And as you've seen, I've ordered a lot online, but if I can get to a shop, that's what I want to do. So I did order some linen and order. I picked up some linen and a couple charts. And if you're looking for a certain linen, they have a website that you can go to, but you could also call and they might have it in stock. They had a lot. I put a picture in the opening of the bins of linen. So this is I picked up just a couple charts. This is Scarlet House. This is from Market, a Stitcher's Alphabet. No, I haven't kitted this. I just wanted to get the chart. So that was one that I hadn't purchased yet, but was on my list. I wanted to just get that. This is an older chart that I'm going to pull out to read the verse because it's so beautiful. Sorry, give me a crinkle. This is by Erica Michaels, Constant Companion. It's got two samplers in it. And the one I was interested in is this one, which is, looks like that. And the little one is done over silk gauze, which I've had a hard time finding silk gauze. I'm going through the chart to find the, the verse. Now oh, here it is. But I asked, I think it's Anne who owns Shepherd's Needle, if she had any silk gauze and she had some. So I picked up two sizes. I picked up the 40 count, and this will be done, if I use it, will be done with a tenth stitch, which means just one leg of the X. And what you do is you stitch fabric all around so you can put it in your hoop so the hoop is not touching the silk. There's the 40 count, and I also picked up a piece of 32 count. I said, give me both because I might prefer one over the other and I've had such a hard time finding it. But the verse on this, on this little sampler, I'll read it to you. And it could be done on a larger count. Uh, you wouldn't have to do 40 count silk gauze. You could do 40 count just regular. Uh, could do whatever size, but here's the verse. It says, no one can look upon the needle without emotion. It is a constant companion throughout the pilgrimage of life. And I know it sure has been for me, whether it's been a hand sewing needle with stitching, embroidery, or whether it's been my sewing machine needle for all the decades I did quilting and still do, or the hand sewing needle with my English paper piecing, it's been a constant companion for over 50 years for me. So I just loved that verse. And so I picked that up. And the colors, it's done with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten um, colors of weeks. Okay, let me, I don't want to mess up that silk gauze. So let me... So I did not get the colors for that, but I have that. This was also from Market, from Needlework Press that I got at Shepherd's Needle. These are note cards. And I'm gonna show you those. We've got this sampler. This one, it's all in a pack. Love that. That one would be fun just framed. And then this one. So I saw that and thought, oh, I have to have that. So that came in a little package. And then in the opening picture, if you want to go back to that later and look, there is a picture of 
the Farmhouse Christmas by Little House Needleworks, which has nine different scenes. And I've had those charts forever. Here's one of them. And I had the linen. I had 30 count Mariner's Map. But I just wasn't excited about starting it until I saw the model at Shepherd's Needle, and it was done on 25 count vintage country mocha over one. It was stunning. And as soon as I saw it, I said, what is that on? It's over one, right? And they said, it's on the 25 count Vintage Country Mocha, and they even had cuts already in a package, ready to go. I said, I want that. And then I got the threads. Just, yep, let me just have the threads. So it's got two colors of DMC. There's the two colors of DMC, and the rest, I think, are classic color works. And since I'm doing it over one, I probably didn't need all of the bamboo because that's set for 30 count over two, but I thought just in case I change my mind, let me get it all. So here it is. And there is, these are originally, I think, done on pillows, but there is a border chart that is complimentary on the Farmhouse Christmas series. So if you want that, put a comment in the video and I will put a link to that. So I'm just gonna real quick uh, printed that out and it's complimentary by Little House Farmhouse Christmas Border and it goes all the way around. So I am all set. So I've got the border, I've got, why am I holding a plastic bag? I'll show you that's what the TMC was in or the linen. I've got everything ready. I'm actually thinking I might start that pretty soon. But do take a look at the opening again because it's it was charming, it was stunning, it was elegant, it was all of those things. Now you can do little ornaments or pillows, but I really liked it all together. So I did pick that up and then I'll show you the linen and then I think we're all done. I think that's it. And I'll probably be coming back in about three more weeks because in two weeks, I think it's two weeks, two and a half weeks, I will be at the Queen City uh, Sampler Guild is putting on a workshop with Nicola Parkman. So I'll be at that. So I'll probably come back to you in three weeks after that's over. But I wanted to show you the linen that I picked up at Shepherd's Needle. And I'll hold it up against the Vintage Country Mocha so you can see this is 37 count corn tassel. And I have looked for this for a long time. So when, as soon as I saw that, I grabbed it. I've got fat quarters of all of these. So it is a light cream color, just maybe a touch of yellow, but really it's just a beautiful cream. And that's 37 count. This is 38 count Irish coffee. Now, on my, which is on the floor now, I'm not going to grab, but on my shores of Hawk Run Hollow, I used sand dune. Can I grab it? Maybe I can. Oh, I could. Yes, this is sand dune. And this is similar. It's not quite the same, but it's similar. So I grabbed that because I'm always looking for a good kind of golden color. This is Irish coffee. These are by Access Commodities. So you can see there, Irish coffee. Then this one is Needle and Flax Steinbeck. This is one of those uh, gray, kind of grungy, but it's a good color. You can see 
And I don't have, I don't think, anything except murky that's kind of this color. And murky is, of course, much darker. So I thought that was a good one to get. Mostly I got colors I do not have. This I have, but I love it so much I got another piece. This is Needle and Flax Sleeping Bear. Perfect sampler color. And what am I working on that's got Sleeping Bear? Um, checking my notes. And Tall. And Tall is on Sleeping Bear. So I picked up a fat quarter of that. And this is Dolly Madison by Needle and Flax. I don't have this one either. So here that is. Let me open it up so you can see it against the Vintage Country Mocha. A little bit darker and browner. And I was looking for those golden tones. This is Nutmeg by Classic, uh, no, Color and Cotton. Here that is. Let me hold it up. It's so rich and gorgeous. It's not, it's not the same as Havana. It's a little more golden, I think. Here's the Irish coffee against it. So it's darker and more golden. But again, it's a good, that kind of golden rod, dark mustard color. Then here's another one that's that color. This is old, no, the Gold Rush. Bestitch Me. Took me a minute to do the initials. This is by Bestitch Me. Beautiful. So here's, here is um, Nutmeg. Here is Old Gold. So I thought those were good. Then this one is new from Fox and Rabbit Dust Bunny. You know, hold it up next to Vintage Country Mocha. You can see it's kind of gray, but also very light. And two more. Mayflower. Fox and Rabbit took me a minute. So here it is. Here's the Dust Bunny. Here's the Mayflower. And put it against the Vintage Country Mocha. And it's an, it's got just a touch of tan in it. It's not pure white. And one last one, Eureka. And remember, Mar I think it was Marianne, no, it was Emmeline Hodgkiss used Eureka, and I didn't have it, so I'm using Farley instead. But I thought, I better get some Eureka, because I don't have it. So here is Eureka next to the Vintage Country Mocha. Let me see if I can reach Marianne. No, let me see. Can I reach it? Here's the Emmeline. This is Farley. And here's the Eureka. You can see Farley has just a touch more brown, but that's cut there. Colors a little bit more. So this little bit more golden, but I was happy with the Farley that I got. But I did decide I better get some Eureka because I didn't have it. So I have got some beautiful choices of linen now. I'm very pleased with that. Um, and I'll probably be going on a moratorium for a while, just because all these things came in at once. So now I'm gonna focus on stitching. Um, all right, I think that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed uh, our visit today. And at the end of this video, I am going to put a little, video overlook of what the aftermath looks like. You saw before the floss tube and you'll see after the floss tube. So I'll be back in probably three weeks. I will be posting on Instagram, probably post a little bit from Nicola's workshop. I'm looking forward to that. It's hard to believe it's almost here. So until next time, I want to again thank you for visiting with me. Thank you for all your support. It means the world. Thank you so much. So happy stitching, everyone. Until next time. Thank you. Just a quick look. 
Everything I showed you is now all around my chair on the floor. <laughs> all right, everyone, until next time, happy stitching.